Hello everyone, how's everyone doing? You guys doing good too? I'm doing good too. Let's get on today's video session. Here we go. Yeah. As always, rock on music on my channel. So today we're gonna to be still doing talking about Panasonic Toughbook 55. So only videos by me on this device, isn't it? So today we're gonna to be talking about yeah. Uh, we're gonna be still talking about its graphics card. There's a lot of things to, that needs to be covered. In this video, because if you guys are unsure what this graphics card is all about, uh, don't worry, it's all gonna be covered by me. Okay, so keep on listening in this video, and you'll get more of the insider of this GPU he uses. Of course, it's the ATN Radeon Pro WX4150. So, this is the graphics card we're talking about. So when we're going to continue this topic, we're going by step by step. I know it's not covered in one because like if you do it all in one, it makes the whole thing frustrating and confusing, isn't it? And that's why I don't just think it's the right way just to talk about it just like that in seconds and just get rid of it. No, we should be talking more about this because I've seen few articles on this GPU they're not getting this all right you'll soon find out what I'm talking about here this is so ridiculous that you're not gonna believe this what I've been reading about this GPU and what kind of things they're talking about it it's just completely ridiculous okay it is made for designers okay Four GB of um, GTDR5 memory clocked seven seven gigahertz, which is seven thousand. By the way, it gives good performance. Oh, sorry, it gives good gaming performance and doesn't need to. Compared to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. I mean, I actually got that from my point of view. So I've learned some parts that I don't think was very ridiculous. Did you just say that? They were trying to compare this to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. What? Why the heck would you say such a rubbish like that? And when did even ATI even say that? It's even comparable to that. And why did some of these stupid articles write such rubbish like that? What's it got to do with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080? It's got nothing to do with it. What's that got to do with it? It has nothing to do with that. Please, please. Do not get disappointed what I'm saying here. This video card has got nothing to do with the RTX 2080s. It's got nothing to do with it. And if you read some articles, please beware. They're going to say that the gaming performance rating of ATM Radeon Pro WX 450 is nowhere near as 
NVIDIA RTX 2080. Of course, it won't be good as that. Why? Why would it be good as that? It's not supposed to be in that kind of line of video cards, is it? It's really like entitled for really for designers and giving you fair amount of gaming performance for your video games. Yeah, of course he will do that for you. There's nothing wrong with this card. Please do not take this seriously because this is a still a very good graphics card. Okay, we're gonna go a bit more further into this. Right, the AT Radeon Pro WX 4150, right? Um, has a display port, right? Uh, of 1.3 HPR forward slash 1.4 HT ready. Well, if you look on that side of things, it's very impressive, okay? And with a Direct X 12. You always need that because without the DirectX 12, it doesn't give you near enough good performance. With that, it boosts some of the performance you need. DirectX is very important, which obviously is made by Microsoft. We need that. Okay. Right. The benchmarks. There's not enough going on the benchmarks of this video card. I'm going to still be investigating like I, from the last time I told you. I will bring some benchmarks, but I still can't find any many video games that are talking about the benchmarks on it. I'm going to talk a bit more about this video card, don't worry about this. Benchmark, so performance is 8.69, okay? Pass mark is 18.77. If you look at these numbers I just told you, I mean, these numbers aren't that bad. Not bad at all. This will give you some very good performance, okay, for your work and for your gaming. Trust me on that. It's going to be very, very good for that. So don't just think it won't, but it, it will, okay. Uh, right, and now I'm going to talk about some graphics card performance, okay. One, the one I've got some information on was... NVIDIA, NVIDIA Quadro P500 which scores 92.87% and then we got our video card what we talk about right now which is an ATI Radeon Pro WX4150 which scores 100% check it out so it beats that one the NVIDIA Quadro P500 is actually better than that so this performs better. I still don't get it why some articles are mentioning NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. That's flipping really, really stupid to even talk about that. This card has nothing to do with that and it's not even at that level, okay? So, but still, it gives you that kind of your work and game performance, it's very good for that. Try it for yourself, it is pretty good. Okay, the other thing about this card is it, if you look at the GPD with Max, right, and one GX1, it will blow that GPU out of the way. Because then our GPUs are they? They integrated GPUs in them systems. But in this system, the Panasonic Toughbook 55, this is a video card. Okay? This is a proper video card. So whatever the ATI Radeon Pro WX 4150 does is pretty pretty good. It's not bad at all what it does. All the performances like from low 768p's, 1080p medium and 1080p high. There are remarkably good results on it. And the, one of the most important thing about this is the results you're seeing, right?
don't get a bit disappointed in the results. If you're not happy with the the results numbers you're seeing, it depends on the uh, the CPU and how much RAM is installed. You see, these two things are important. The higher the CPU and more RAM is installed, the better results you're going to get for your gaming. Yeah. Because I think the results which are coming out right now, they're coming from the Intel i5 core. If you have the Intel i7 core, right, with at least a memory of 32 GB, you're going to get much better results from this video card. Trust me. It's hard to just tell you straight away what kind of results this card's gonna get. But trust me, having a Intel i7 core and having about 32 GB or 64 GB is much better. Because that's where it's gonna give you some serious benchmark results. I mean just having you on like Intel i5 core and with 8 GB RAM, that wouldn't give you good results. Trust me wouldn't. I'll tell you why, what happens there. You see, the CPU gi gives the whole system the resource, doesn't it? We all know that. It's going to the whole system, right? It's not only just going to the video card, is it? It's going to the whole damn system. Why was in there? With it to i5 core, it does give you that really, really fast speeds. It is very good though, what it is. But as it's, it's sharing to the rest of all the other parts, to the softwares, okay? Because mainly it's about software, isn't it? It doesn't only share nothing to the hard hardware. It's all about the software. First, it gives you some to the hardware, with, if any hardware needs it. And the rest goes to the software, a bit. But with their memory, right, that gives some extra boost to your GPUs. The memory can even boost up your CPU memory as well and your GPU. Yeah, it does that. If the GPU doesn't have much memory, it probably could boost some memory to it. Obviously, this is a video card. So no memory is going to go from the memory to the video card memory. That, that's not going to happen. But some memory can be go to the CPU. Can you see how it works? Because the memory, the more bigger the memory, the more memory will be going to the CPU. And with that clock speeds it does, it makes it go more faster. The CPU will go fast for what it is. It will have a bit of boost to it. But the problem here is the i5 core can't do much of it. So having an i7 core in there, obviously that's even faster with its uh, megahertz and all that, which helps you a lot. But if the memory wants to give more memory to the CPU, oh my gosh, it will have even more faster boost cycles. Both of these two things, the memory and the CPU, do a lot of hard work. And once that does it, it goes follow up to the GPU. Then the GPU automatically starts increasing performance. Yeah, it does that. It actually increases performance with the help of the memory and the CPU. It does that. And that's why it's better to have more memory and CPU. The higher the CPU. Because the higher the CPU already, because you know it's faster megahertz. That helps you a lot. But if the memory wants to give more, give more memory to the CPU, that's going to even boost it more speed, isn't it? And the GPU whatever memory is going on its own you see memory goes to the CPU and the CPU will, can give more speed boost to the GPU you see how it works and that GPU 
will have more faster FPSs. Yeah, it will have more faster FPSs. It will increase speed. And that's how it works. So that's the thing they don't understand. Because they keep on looking at the the minimum spec of the Panasonic Toughbook 55. Do not, if you're looking for great performance for your designing and for your gaming performance, then go for Intel Core i7 Core. And if you got a bit of money, try to install 32 GB or 64 GB of memory. Yeah, that's why it's gonna have more. Yeah, rather have the original specs of i5 Core with 8 GB RAM. That's not good enough. So I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here. Because without that, it doesn't make a it doesn't do any justice to the video card, does it? Believe me, this video card is pretty good. If you know how to use this GPU properly and you understand it. You don't need to get, you don't need to probably even get frustrated to listen to my, all my speech on this video because some people can't understand this kind of stuff. Just get yourself into i7 core and just get the memory of 32 GB or 64 GB. You're done. Trust me, it's going to give you really, really fast FPS and higher FPSs for your GPU. It's going to do that, man. So bear that in mind. So... Follow these steps if you want that and whoa, check your Panasonic Toughbook 55 boost up great speeds man. Because it's not a normal video card, I'll, I'll tell you that straight. It's not a normal video card. What Panasonic used in his Toughbook 55, it is it is a quite good one. Okay, we know it's not NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 and stuff like that. Yeah. A, do say that it's not like that, but this video card has full power to do a lot of stuff. It won't disappoint you, man. You'll be very surprised how good it really is. So, yeah, Panasonic Toughbook 55 and the ATM Radeon Pro WX 4150. It's a pretty good choice. So, do buy this three things you will need if you're looking for a great FPS especially for your gaming performance please go for Intel i7 core memory should be 32 GB or 64 GB and get your GPU of 18 Radeon Pro WX Pro 50 that's it you're done your Panasonic Top 55 will be a great performer man you know it will cost a bit but if you want that, yeah, you'll have to do that. I'm afraid there's no other choice. So save some money. It's an expensive option though, but you just have to do it. So yeah, it'll be absolutely a great, amazing piece of state of state of the art device. Parasonic top device. Give you likes, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.